Hello guys, Dustin Drews here. I want to do a little video on on trap modification. Um, everybody sets goals in trapping, but the reason I wanted to uh, to kind of cover trap modification in my goals is last year, I don't know if you guys heard or read it on Wolf Nation when I was doing a little writing, I was having pullouts like crazy with this trap right here. Um, it's a bridge number two, two coiled, regular jaw, non-offset, uh, non-laminated with the posi trip pan enlarged. Um, <clears throat> all I did is I center swiveled them and put the posi trip pan on. I thought that was going to uh, to be the cat's meow for coon. Uh, one day I lost 11 coon in this trap. Some guys PM me. I'm going to trip this here. It gets a little noisy. On Woofer Nation about uh, what's going on and they said because the pause that trip pan could be riding up the levers that could be causing my issue on, on raccoons so I, I took this off and went to the standard bridger pan back on it and I was still having the issue uh, I did every reading research you name it trapper radio trapper man how to learn to trap trap whatever website you could find about trap modification and this is what I come up with and, and why I decided to do it my goals this year is to have less than five percent pullouts on traps um, so I come up with this trap that's actually the same one that I was using last year it's a bridge number two uh, what I did differently is I put a double jaw in here so you got a jaw of the trap an uh, area for the swelling to happen and then a piece of quarter inch key stock right here that acts as a double jaw everybody said my problem was from the raccoons chewing or weak springs so I, I added a another quarter inch piece of stock here that's going to act as lamination and it's going to act as a jaw protector from chewing. What I also did with these traps is instead of being center swiveled, I put the swivel off to the side like a, a standard, I guess, El Cheapo trap or the typical traps you get. And the reason I did that is <clears throat> I never had animals fighting my soup can traps last year. And I could never figure out why. And I think when that animal pulls against the trap, it puts a bind on his arm. I also come across the trap radio show with Scott Welch and Clint uh, going back and forth about traps being center swiveled and not center swiveled. And if you look at it, if that animal's pulling on a center swiveled trap straight away, it doesn't hurt him at all. But if it was off to the edge, and he was pulling and I was putting a bind on him just like a choke collar on your dog I think it's going to hurt him more so we'll fight it less so that's what I did the only thing I got left to do with these is put four coils on them I'm going to order them later this week I'll take you out to the bench and show you how I set these up to weld them uh, it took me a little bit to figure out how to do it efficiently without getting this cockeyed up or down and, and getting it flush whoops flush with the jaws here looks like I gotta add a little pan tension but anyways we'll uh, we'll get out to the workbench and I'll show you how to do these alright guys we're out here on the bench like I told you um, this is your material that you're gonna get it's quarter inch stock um, these are 10 foot long. Uh, when you do as many traps as I did, I recommend welding them together on the end. So you only have to measure once for every four pieces you cut. Um, you cut them for a bridger number two, I cut mine all three and five eighths long. I didn't deburr these yet, but I have two of them laying here that I deburred. A uh, spring clamp comes in very handy for doing this. A buffing wheel to clean stuff off your new shoe. A cutoff wheel to cut off the center swivel. And then a, a screwdriver to dig out the, the holding piece on the jaw. 
Uh, this piece is probably the key ingredient to doing it. It's just a piece of flat stock. I painted it to keep the splatter from building up on it. Um, if you're going to do a bunch of them, you can see the splatter marks right here. Just keep an eye on it. You don't want your double jaws to get in there cockeyed. I have a Millermatic 250 welder. Uh, you guys don't need nothing too fancy for doing this. Uh, Harbor Freight sells welders. Uh, if you guys can't afford that, go to some of the machine shops around town. Most of the good old boys around there, if you tell them, hey, can you teach me how to weld and modify traps and sweep your floor, help you out, they'll be willing to do it for you. At least I would. I start out by taking off the chain. We start to radiate all on all mine. Chains off. I just throw these in a pile. I got a bucket full of them to put back on. Then you take your uh, piece of flat stock and put it between the jaws, like so. Then you use your spacer. I use quarter inch, you can use three eighths. Uh, I tried half inch, it got a little too wide. The reason I went with quarter inch is sooner or later I plan on putting number three Bridger pans on these. And I know these will fit between the, uh, these will, won't affect the Bridger number three pans on a Bridger number two tread. So you just set it in there. And then you set your stock on top of it. And what that piece of stock does, is hold it perfectly parallel with the top of the jaw. When I uh, first started doing it, I was dropping nuts down in there to hold it, and it just was a pain in the neck. And I, I finally dinked around with it enough to to hold to use just a quarter inch stock. It gave me, I thought, what the right gap was, and I had it available. Next, you just take a piece, uh, spring clamp, put it on there at an angle so it won't move. Um, Make sure everything's nice and level, as you can see. Just lay it on the table. Make sure you ground good, you don't have no air moving through. There's one side. There's the other. Flip it over. Grab my other spacer. do the same thing. Make sure that key stock in there for your double jaw is laying flat. You don't want it kinked up or down. I've had a couple of them I had to redo because of them. Then if you did it nice and tight, these kind of stick in there. I just pry them out with a screwdriver. Now, I don't know if you can see that. The jaws do flex a little bit in the holes. But you can see them jaws are perfectly parallel to the trap. Um, next thing we're going to do is up tape. I'm going to put a pan on this. Open it up. And we're going to tack weld inside to make it flush and give it just a little bit of an offset. Good. All right, this is the trap that we just got done with. Um, you can see there's a little gaps right here and here and here. Uh, we're going to fill that in with a weld and, and, and put just a little dabble of weld on top to make it just a hair bit of offset. Now we've got them lugs built up, we're going to drop the trap, it's going to fall. Now we just have a hair bit of offset in the trap, and this trap is ready for the line after I put the chain on the side. Uh, all you do to put the chain on the side, I'll go grab a J-hook.
J-hook just slides in here. Of course, this one's too skinny, of course, because I'm doing it on the Make a long story short, just hook your J-hook in here neatly and like so. And then just take your chain, hook it on, crimp it, and you got one, two, three, four swiveling points. And what I really like about the trap being swiveled off to the side is when you're in a pocket in clay conditions, this could be off to the side. Or if you got a drag for coon and you're throwing this off the side, it's out of the way when you're trying to bed the trap solid. So that's that's basically it in a nutshell. If you guys have any questions that you want me to cover, let me know. If you can see, Brian will shine over there. That's 160 of them to where we're at right here. So I just thought I'd throw this video up there. Help guys out. Like I said on the beginning, I lost 11 coons in one day because the traps weren't modified like this. So all I have left to do is four coil them. That's just as simple as sliding springs over, latching them over this lever, and these are ready for the line. Thanks for watching. Any questions? Uh, my email is Dustin underscore Drews at Yahoo.com. D-U-S-T-I-N underscore Drews at Yahoo.com.